years back, my, my family and I were, uh, were on a trip there, and uh, in the evening after an exhausting day tromping around the city, we went to a restaurant. It was on 42nd Street. I'm not going to tell you the name of it, uh, the reason for which you'll know shortly. But as, uh, as we uh, ordered our meals, we're waiting for them to arrive. Finally, they did. We were starving out of our minds. My daughter's meal arrived in front of her, and it had some chicken sort of thing. There was a rice sort of thing sitting over here. And uh, a couple of seconds after she began eating, she shrieked. I looked over. There was one grain of, of rice larger than all the others. Uh, in fact, it was a roach. It was a roach. So I, I beckoned uh, the, the waiter I had him come over and explain to him we'd prefer something different uh, than this. Uh, he was all aghast. He ran over and he got the, the maitre d' who came back and looked at this. And then finally, after some examination, explained to me this was not their roach. <laughs> I didn't know what he meant by that, but he walked away satisfied and that was the end of the discussion. Now I want to tell you about a different day in New York City. So I, a couple of years ago, we met an extraordinary man, a man who has an organization in New York City, multiple restaurants called Union Square Hospitality Group. The man's name is Danny Meyer. As we were exploring this organization, trying to understand why it's so sustainably effective, why in spite of the fact they open this, this incredible variety, this disparate group of restaurants, why every single one of them seems to just dominate in the market space, uh, we, we heard a story. Apparently, just uh, the day before, a woman came to one of their restaurants, Gramercy Tavern, and uh, as she arrived at the restaurant, she walked in, she was a little late for her reservation. This was lunchtime, and she was supposed to meet a group of colleagues. She said she was all flustered. She walked in, and as soon as she went up to the maitre d', she went, oh my gosh. She turned around, ran out the door, looked up and down the street, and then finally came back in in despair. She said that uh, uh, as the maitre d' inquired, uh, what, what's wrong? She said, I, I just got dropped off by a taxi. She said, and I left my purse, my cell phone, my wallet, everything in the taxi. The maitre d' immediately, without hesitation, puts his arm around her. He says, let me escort you to your table. Your party is waiting. I'm sure your credit is good. We'll settle up later, take care of your lunch responsibilities. Everything will be fine. As she sits down, he says, by the way, what's your mobile number? And he writes it down and then disappears. Well, unbeknownst to her, he goes off, finds a colleague, and he says, call this number. For the next 30 minutes, his colleague calls the mobile number over and over and over until finally uh, a, a sort of dazed taxi driver answers it. By this time, he's up in the Bronx, about 20, 30 miles away from this location. She says, uh, this, the, the person from Union Square Hospitality Group says, uh, would you please drive back towards Gramercy Tavern? I'll pay the fare. I'll meet you halfway. She jumps in a taxi. She meets them halfway. She retrieves the purse, gets the mobile phone, arrives back at the restaurant just at the moment that this woman is completing her lunch, delivers the purse and the mobile phone, and the woman swears to name her first child after the, <laughs> the Gramercy Tavern. So we, we began studying 20 years ago what it takes to create a high-performance culture. And here's how we defined it. And again, we didn't know that the answer would be uh, that something existed, but we wondered, are there organizations that are supremely capable not just of innovation, but also of execution? Most of us read a lot of literature that suggests you better pick between the two. If you're competing in a commodity industry, it's all about execution. If you're competing in high value added services, then innovation is what it's at, but you're going to trade off some value in, in the capacity to execute predictably. But we wondered, are there organizations that do both, that walk and chew gum? And if so, is the combination of those two far more than just additive? Is the combination of the ability to innovate and execute, the capacity to produce results, to transform possibilities into facts, far in excess of any other type of human system? So we looked for organizations over the past 22 years that were trying to get there and those that were there. When we talked to Danny Meyer and learned about Gramercy Tavern, we start digging underneath it and saying, what's unique about that culture? You know what's, you know what's remarkable? It's exactly the same thing that's unique about KIPP. You're going to be meeting uh, David Levin, who founded KIPP, this wonderful charter school system that's making a difference for at-risk youth across the United States. It's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. 
as organizations that compete in technology or financial services. So I'm talking with Danny Meyer. And I said, tell me one of the most important things you need in your cultural operating system. I want you to listen and decode the language. He said, one of the most important things is centering the salt shaker. I said, really? <laughs> I was a little disappointed. And he said, it's a metaphor. <laughs> he said, one of the things that we focus on the most is people offering consistent, gentle pressure to their colleagues. He says it's, it's like the salt shaker. It belongs at a particular spot on the table, but you know what happens? It always creeps away. It moves away. So our job as colleagues at Union Square Hospitality Group is to apply gentle, consistent, constant pressure to get it back to the center. And if I can create a culture where everybody holds everybody accountable, applying constant, gentle pressure. Do you hear the three words? If I can get people to be absolutely honest and absolutely respectful, absolutely all the time, then the salt shaker's always in the center of the table and things go the way they're supposed to. But you know what's interesting? While that sounds like an execution metaphor, it's saying, can we execute our processes consistently? It's also at the heart of innovation. What happened with the woman that day leaving her purse in the taxi cab was novel. And they don't have a scripted response for that. They needed a human system that could respond to novel challenges in an incredibly effective way. And they have it. Why? Because they have this cultural operating system where people are constantly challenging each other to live up to their values and their vital behaviors. Drucker said this really well. He said, culture eats strategy for breakfast. In other words, what's at the base of that pyramid is far more consequential in some ways to our capacity to achieve our mission than what sits on top, than picking the right strategy or product or process sometimes. In fact, it enables all of those.